Hola amigos, I'm Javier Ortiz, a traveling filmmaker and drone cinematographer, currently spending two months traveling around the entire coast of Spain and Portugal. I'm starting this journey in one of the most creative cities in the entire world, Barcelona. I want to talk about why you should visit Barcelona for more than just a few days. In this first episode of my Iberian Adventure vlog, I explore Antony Gaudi's masterworks of architecture like La Sagrada Familia. I attend one of the biggest music festivals in the world, the Primavera Sound, visit various beaches and embrace the siesta culture watching the sunsets and enjoying great food and good times with amazing people. And I reconnect with an old friend in a very unexpected way. Let's get to exploring Barcelona and the amazing aspects that make it one of the most creative cities in the world. But first, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to keep up with these Iberian adventures as I release vlogs from various regions of Spain and Portugal. Vámonos! Hola! I've made it to Barcelona. I've been here for a couple days now, just rolling through some jet lag. It was definitely affecting me. Um, I was like awake. I think the first night I slept kind of like the whole day on and off like three hour sessions and then I couldn't sleep from like or I did sleep from midnight to 3 a.m. and then I couldn't sleep from 3 to 6 30 which was fine because it was kind of overcast and setting the mood you know just taking it slow chill now I've kind of acclimated back and ready to hit the day especially right now that the sun's out so, ready to hit the town and show you guys what Barcelona is all about. Now, if you're coming from the United States, you definitely want to plan on having some time to acclimate through jet lag. Me coming from Seattle, I traveled through nine time zones and it took me about two to three days to really get through the random surges of energy and depletion of energy and sleeping and waking up at random times. Second day I was here, I went and got a tattoo by my friend Hey Norte. Jenny Norte, check her out. And right now, I'm on my way to La Sagrada Familia with my friend Sealskin. I've explored around the church a few times on my previous trips, but this will be my first time inside the church to experience the stained glass windows. I got the earliest ticket I could at nine to get the morning light just beaming through the windows to get the color beaming. So stay tuned for some videos from that. Ciao. La Sagrada Familia is Barcelona's most visited attraction. 4.5 million people per year visit the interior of the church, and even three times more people explore the exterior for photos and videos. La Sagrada Familia was built in 1882 by Antony Gaudi, and over the last 140 years it's still under construction. This is mostly due to the fact that during the Spanish Civil War, most of the blueprints and models for the plan were burned and destroyed. Antony Gaudi actually died in 1926, 44 years later at the age of 74 when he was run over by a tram observing La Sagrada Familia and since then all the architects that have taken the lead on this project have really just been trying to figure out what exactly Anthony Gaudi had planned in making this ethereal and cosmic creation. Pricing to enter La Sagrada Familia starts at 26 euro and goes up to 40 euro if you want to go up one of the towers or get a guided tour. But it's free on holidays and you can even attend mass every Sunday for free as well. The Se La Sagrada Familia should be finished by 2026. Now Gaudi rests in the crypt below La Sagrada Familia, forever entombed in his masterpiece creation. Now I still feel that the best time to go in La Sagrada Familia is first thing in the morning at 9 a.m. because of the morning light beaming through the beautiful stained glass windows and pretty much any time after 10 and midday is just immensely full of people. So if you can't make it at 9 a.m. I'd also try to make it closer to the later hours around sunset where the light is also beaming through the other side of the, the church. Margo is here channeling the angelic light and space of the basilica. It's got a cosmic energy that surrounds you and makes you feel like you're on another planet.
Hola amigos, I'm chilling here at Barceloneta Beach with my new bike that I just picked up so I could whip it around town. Oh, I'm flashing off my butterfly by Sam. And yeah, just endless people watching. And next I'm heading into the Gothic Quarter to a bike shop to grab a lock park up the bike anywhere I want. Hopefully it doesn't get stolen within like a week. There's high thief activity in Barcelona. It's like infamous for that. All you can do is what you can and if your shit gets stolen, it's just a part of life. Kind of sucks. Really sucks. But from my stuff being stolen here back in 2019, Pretty much every day after that was really great, letting go of so much. Hard reminder to be back in the present moment. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm sharing with you today. Just some people watching, what I'm up to. Hope you're enjoying the show. I'm enjoying life. And yeah, I'll show you more. Stay tuned. Definitely keep in mind that Barcelona has one of the world's highest amount of pickpocketing and thief activity. So when exploring and visiting Barcelona, keep a fanny pack or like a crossbody bag on you at all times and don't have things kind of loose around. Always keep an eye on your belongings. Don't put it down casually to the side. <laughs> Hello, buenos dias. Javi here in Barcelona. I just woke up. Where the fuck am I? It's kind of like north of Barcelona. I went out to like a rooftop terrace artist music event last night. Nice and quaint. Sunset, sea breeze. Good people, good tunes, good talks. Just checking out the morning light everywhere I go. Hitting the buildings, trees, birds waking up. It's just been a good morning, man. Good day, good times. But yeah, I'm gonna get back on my walk. So you a little walking ambience before I cut it. But ciao, amigos. Now, as much as I love riding my bike through the city, still the best way to get around Barcelona is by foot. One of the best walking cities in the world. With over 100 kilometers of bike lane, Barcelona is one of the best cities to get around by bike. You can rent a bike for as cheap as 10 euro per day, or if you're staying for a bit longer, it's actually cheaper to buy a bike off Facebook Marketplace or somewhere 
used like that. I bought my bike for 120 euro and was able to whip it around town for a few weeks. This is the Montjuic Castle on top of Montjuic Mountain. It's got some of the best viewpoints in all of the city. Some other of my favorite viewpoints are Parque Nardo, where you can also find the bunkers, as well as Tibidabo. Here I joined Margo and her friends for yet another amazing sunset on the beach. You can't beat the summer sunsets here in Spain. Just picked up some groceries, gonna cook some dinner for Margarita and I. Got some salmon picked out, capers, broccoli, garlic, and oh, I forgot the lemon. <sighs> Alright, I'm still out on the street, so I'll just go grab one. But don't forget these little things, guys. But yeah, well, lucky for me, there's so many fresh markets all around here. I, I mean, anything you're really looking for, you could literally just walk, follow your flow, and it'll end up right there for you. But yeah, today's been pretty chill. Just been editing. My current daily routine is kind of shooting around sunrise and that golden morning glow. Yeah. And once it starts to get to like sunset, golden hour time, I'll figure out food for the evening before I go out for a little sunset adventure. Just show you some city ambience if anything. Now one of the most popular accommodations for travelers passing through Barcelona would be the hostels. And I've almost always stayed at hostels when I've been traveling through Barcelona, but that was on my shorter trips. Now being here in Barcelona for a few weeks, I decided to get an Airbnb. And not just a, an entire place to myself, but 
I actually rented a room in a local's home who has a few other rooms that they rent out on Airbnb to travelers like myself who want to spend a bit more time in Barcelona but also have a place to come home to where they can be more comfortable and even work from home. Okay friends, we've got our lemon for dinner. I believe I've got all the ingredients to entice my friend and enjoy a lovely evening together. Now I'll be entering my building. If you guys want to see what that whole process is like. Up the stairs. Check that out. Ain't that cool, right? And there it is. Probably looks bigger than it actually is, but. That's it. Time to show you guys the Airbnb. We got living room space, you know, some TV. I didn't touch that at all. Kitchen's right over here. So I'm just putting my groceries down. And let's see if I clean my room before I leave. I'm clean. Okay, not really, but it's all good. Got my setup here, desk. Working half the time, part time, and perhaps the best part the patio. I'm out here drying some clothes right now, but yeah, here's the view. Now, a lot of remote workers like to get Airbnbs or rooms like these where it's not as loud or busy as a hostel and they can still have their own private, quiet time to work. Some neighborhoods or barrios that I recommend would be Tetuan, here where I stayed at this Airbnb. As uh, another barrio I loved was Gracia, and El Born has always attracted me. It's right next to Park Citudela, the biggest park in all of Barcelona. That's all for now, my friends. Thanks for joining me so far. I'll catch you tomorrow. Buenas noches, cuidasen, ciao. The metro and bus system is another great way to get around the city with buses and metros constantly stopping every 10 to 15 minutes. It's really easy to get around and have multiple options so you can choose to walk a portion of your way for the day or hop on a metro or hop on a bus. You can really just mix it around based on how you feel. Now each one does have its own energy and feel to it. The metro can be a little bit stuffy since it is underground and full of people since it is the fastest way, especially through going through the city center like the Gothic Quarter, it gets pretty crazy packed. My preferred methods of getting around Barcelona are bike, walking, and the bus, leaving the metro actually the last and least favorite to get around. Um, unless I'm in a hurry, then the metro will definitely get you over somewhere quickly. But the buses are also nice because they have air conditioning for those hot summer days. And because it goes through the city, you get to see more of Barcelona while you're riding around. One mode of transportation I definitely do not recommend is renting a car. There's absolutely nowhere for anybody to park in Barcelona unless you're a resident. All the public spots are for residents only and you'll have to pay for parking almost 20 to 30 euro per day in these underground dungeony parking spaces and absolutely do not recommend, it's a mess. If you're renting anything to get around, definitely get a moped, a scooter, or a bike. Now the original reason I even planned this trip to Barcelona was for Primavera Sound, one of the biggest music festivals in the world, easily comparable to Coachella where it has 150,000 people capacity. I got this ticket back in 2020 when the festival was announced and it's been sold out since that very same week and for of course through 2020 it's been 
on hold and rescheduled for over two years and I was finally able to come and see these bands that I was so excited to see like Tame Impala, Beach House, Tyler the Creator, The Gorillas. <laughs> Pues estamos en la playa en Barcelona con Margo. Zuleiman. <laughs> Margo y Zuleiman. Zitro Zuleiman. Zitro Man Barak Zuleiman. Just having a good week here, enjoying the water, the sun, bringing in the summer. You can say one of those things like Barcelona. Barcelona! Oh, like the video? <laughs> the symphonic. Yeah, I'll probably make one of Barcelona. Or be like, Bienvenidos a Symphonic Cinema! Estamos en Barcelona! That's it. <laughs> That'll be fun. Ciao amigos, I'll see you in the next spot. <laughs>the city visiting some more of Anthony Gaudí's masterwork around Barcelona. I visited Casa Vicente, Casa Batiao, Casa Milo, Parcuel.
Now wrapping up these three weeks in Barcelona, Margo and I decided to visit a couple other areas outside of Barcelona in Catalonia. We visited Girona and Tarragona. Before starting our adventure out into Catalonia, Margo and I attended a cacao ceremony by Frisant to connect with our hearts, the community, and the nature around us. Hola amigos, estamos en Girona, España. We're here in Girona, Spain. I'm here with Margo, Hola. aka Seal Skin. Would you mind telling us what we're doing here today? Today we're in this marvelous place that uh, Paula in Spirifit invited us all. Uh, I met Paula some time ago and well, I had the honor and pleasure to create music accompaniment to all her sets. Uh, sets of yoga, fitness and just like her method of physical culture and mindfulness. So together we are co-creating that kind of experience, music and physical culture. And this is Fi uh, Retiro, uh, retreat of Fi method. So we're going to be, I guess, enjoying the nature, enjoying our bodies, doing yoga. And also I prepared some special sound experience uh, for tonight. Bueno, I can't wait to see it and yeah, film it. Me too. It's a beautiful place. Um, I'll show you guys some more footage and I'll fly around with the drone a bit yeah. and show you guys what we experienced together. But yes. for now, ciao yeah. amigos. Ciao. Margo and I hopped in a camper van and headed out to Tarragona to hike and explore and film some footage for her Memory of Soul EP that I'm creating with her. I'll put a link to the video in the description below. Definitely check it out. So I hope you'll keep up with my Iberian Adventures series as Margo and I road trip around the entire coast of Spain and Portugal in a camper van, creating amazing visuals and connecting with the nature around us. I hope I've inspired you to visit Spain, visit Barcelona, and not just for a few days, but really stay and take in the siesta culture and embrace the soul of the city. Relax and just enjoy the sun and the people and the food. There's so much to see and experience here in Barcelona. I hope you'll come to enjoy it yourself. And when you do visit Barcelona, make sure to visit La Sagrada Familia, get a bike, walk around the city, visit some of the amazing viewpoints like Montjuic, Tibidabo, and Parcuinardo. Check out a hostel or rent an Airbnb, and even get out of Barcelona and get, go explore out in Catalonia. I highly recommend Cadaqués, Figueres, Girona, Tarragona. 
Costa Brava, anywhere along the coast. It's really so beautiful. Stay tuned for more episodes from the Iberian Adventures vlog as Margo and I explore the entire coast of Spain and Portugal, visiting various regions like the Basque Country, Cantabria, Asturias, Galicia, Andalusia. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more drone films and Iberian adventure vlogs. Now, I did expect to create this vlog on my own, but if you'd like to see more of Margo in this vlog, let us know in the comments below. If you've ever been to Barcelona, let me know some of your favorite spots below. I'll leave a link to my Google master list of Barcelona of all the places I went and highly recommend you visit. Follow us on Instagram at Zitrovision and Sealskin Music Official. I'll leave a link to Margo's YouTube channel as well. If you like the music in this whole vlog, most of it is by Margo herself, either as Sealskin or her new production, Canto del Dragon, that I'm creating all the video visuals for. Also check out the Canto del Dragon film I've created, a 90 minute visual journey of all my drone footage through Spain and Portugal from this entire trip if you wanna find some cinematic teasers of what we experienced. Thanks for watching so far and I'll catch you in the next episode. Ciao amigos.